All right, we're set up. Today we got Josh with us from Odie. This is Coffee with Impetus. We are on episode 11. Um, so, you know, moving fast forward, you all know what Coffee of Impetus is about. It's all about coffee and talk and shop. And as I said again, we have Josh Hopkins here today with Odie. And uh, Josh is going to give us a little introduction of who he is and what he does. Uh, hey, everyone. Um, thanks for having me on. Uh, real pleasure. It's, a, it's an honor to be on here. Uh, as, uh, as Terrence mentioned, uh, my name is Josh Hopkins. I'm the Director of National Sales for Odie Canada. Um, I, I run a team of uh, wholesale sales agencies uh, that work work under underneath me in all the different uh, provinces across the country, uh, calling on contractors and wholesalers, builders, um, everything, everything uh, the like. Uh, as well, I've got a team inside that works on marketing. Uh, we have a product team up here. Uh, that works with the product team in the U.S. as well. Uh, product manager here that's out scouring the market and listening to listening to the demands and bringing Canadian content and and Canadian relevant product uh, into the OD fold. Um, is is OD is OD Canadian? Actually, I never. I was curious. Uh, no, no. So OD is uh, an American company uh, with an international reach. Um, uh, founded in. Cleveland, uh, so head office is Cleveland, Ohio. Uh, Canadian operations started in 1992. Okay, so so as a director of sales, do you? I guess you were saying before you just work a lot of the uh, manufacturer sales rep. Then are you are you at the wholesale side at all, or is it just pure manufacturer sales rep side? Uh, so we're we deal exclusively through manufacturers agents. Yeah. Uh, we have uh, ten. 10 specific agencies we work with across the country um, with, uh, with the likes of uh, other other manufacturers, Navian, um, with, who you'd be familiar with, but with yeah. ProS Sales, uh, Rhea Bell and those guys. Um, yeah, name drop, ProS Sales. If you guys don't know them, those are the guys that we yeah. deal with, great guys. <laughs> so, um, yeah, and then we deal with all the wholesalers um, corporately as well. Um, okay. Cool. Uh, what did you do before this? Before you hit, before you were with Odie, like how long were you at Odie? Uh, so it's a bit of an interesting story. So uh, I've been with Odie since 2018, um, because Odie acquired the company that I worked for uh, for for 15 years prior. Uh, oh, GF Thompson, and and GF Thompson is the, is the manufacturer of the Masters brand. Yeah. Uh, so Canadians watching will know be familiar with let's say like the masters proto and leak detector t-tape crimpers super uh, so familiar that, the canadian company since 1947 um, we were acquired by od company in 2018 uh, so that was where my my journey started with with od company how, how was that merge like how did you feel about that after working for 15 years was it kind of like your decision as well or kind of like would you want to stay after you you guys got bought out or did nothing really change at all throughout that acquisition uh you know what it was uh, it was exciting um a little bit scary uh gf thompson was the with a lot smaller footprint smaller manufacturer kind of family feel and and while Odie is a, is a family company and there is that family feel it is also Kind of uh, corporate America, um, yeah. it is the big company. Uh, so there was a bit of a shift. Um, so excited to join that, like a lot more, a lot more opportunity ahead. But at the same time, uh, you're kind of in your comfort. I was kind of in my comfort zone a bit. Yeah. Uh, having so many years with the same company, doing the same thing, kind of knowing where where things were going, um, and then and then 2018 things kind of changed but but for the better yeah that's interesting well yeah. what so if we pull the clock back even further what were you doing before those 15 years at at uh, gf thompson was it were you were you a plumber by trade were you anything by with the trade or no no not uh, not directly um i actually i had started in school uh going to college for tool and die um so headed towards the trades but it just wasn't uh, it wasn't for me so yeah. i started just 
started working uh, part time at GF Thompson and just kind of climbed climbed the ladder. Was, was uh, it was it kind of like a family recommendation or was it kind of like a friend of a friend or you just said one day I'm just gonna go up to GF Thompson and take a job no. there? No, it was uh, I was looking for something, uh, scouring the newspaper back then uh, oh, yeah. for job postings and uh, and found something just part time help required. Um, that, this was the school, the summer actually before I went to school, um, just to work part time and um, just kind of worked worked in manufacturing here, worked in shipping here, um, ran the shipping department for for a couple of years, uh, worked with the plant manager here, like scheduling production things like that. Uh, I took over the. the the coordination of, of manufacturing for a couple of years and running running our manufacturing side and our, our warehousing side and just lots of opportunities just kind of opened up uh, awesome. for me. Uh, they really really let me shine, gave me a chance, um, and eventually uh, shifted kind of gears from out like the warehouse side and the manufacturing side into marketing. Oh, in, in kind of the other side of the wall into the office and started dealing with our marketing, dealing with wholesalers, um, and working with the sales team. And then uh, they actually, the company put me through school for marketing to back back up my, my learning a bit. Wow. Um, what I was learning on the fly, but they wanted to make sure that I had some a bit more backing behind it. Uh. Uh, so I did that part-time while I was working, and, and uh, again, opportunity presented itself to go out on the road and, and get involved in sales. Uh, doing doing a bunch of the technical stuff for the company as well. Um, so like if if anybody's got a technical question on on Masters products, certainly there's a good chance if you call into Odie and ask a technical question question on Masters, you're probably going to get me still. <laughs> chemical compatibility or something yeah. like that. And it's just learned over time, but uh, but eventually I yeah, just got got so ingrained with the customers and and the product. Uh, that it just made sense to to lead the team, um, and again, opportunity was there. And um, at the fi- final point, I was uh, with with GF Thompson when we when we sold. I was the VP Sales and Marketing. So that's awesome. Started. You 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 literally took every role that came up in your face, and just yeah, and just mastered each role to get to where you were today. Yeah, yeah. Just, they just embraced, embraced it, uh, took took advantage of every opportunity that was there and worked my butt off. And, yeah. You know, that, that's some real stuff. It's the same thing we say with people listening or any apprentices or people who just want to do their own business. It's just, you know, taking the opportunities by the rain and literally going going forward with it. Yeah, 100%. Like, if any opportunity that, that could be presented, uh, it's, it's how you take it. You could... You can sit down and, and just roll with the punches, or you can dive in and embrace it and learn everything there is to know. And you can scoff at what somebody might be trying to teach you, uh, think you know it all, or you could be a sponge and absorb Suck it all it and teach them one day. Exactly what it is. So, going back to Odie a bit, um, what does Odie actually mean? I've actually known the product ever since I started the trade, but you know, what the hell does it mean? Is there a meaning behind it? Yeah, it's uh, it's actually uh, a lot of people do ask, but it's uh, it's a family name. Oh. It's uh, the Odie company, uh, the Odie family started started the company, uh, 1916. Uh, L R Odie started a roof flashing company. Ah. Uh, so in um, the fourth generation of Odie people and Odie family in the business right now. We've got some third generation and fourth generation folks uh, in the company right now. Uh, a lot of employees, but I think we're eight in total um, that do something something in the company. <laughs> wow! So eight, eight in total that are family members. Is what you're saying? That are family. Yeah. How, how how many how many people are in Odie? Like within this big umbrella, do you do you guys count like every? Every sister company that you've guys bought in so far as well. Yeah, you know what, Darren? I, I, I'd make a mistake if I took a guess. Um, there's, there's, there'd be a couple thousand. That's uh, crazy. Internationally, of course. That's crazy. Canada, 
Canadian operation, we're probably 45, 50 associates here. How, many, how much percent would you say that is out of the whole company that, that's in the Canadian market for OD? Uh, it's, uh, we're, we're going to be into like five, five max, max wow. towards OD. OD is a, it's, it's a international company. It's a that's a lot big bigger company. than I actually thought it was. I'm not going to, yeah. I'm not going to joke around with that. <laughs> um, I mean, one of the, one of the real staggering things about, uh, in, in fact, is, um, I mean, we, we produce solvent cement as we have since the seventies and, one of the questions we ask when we when we do the tours, we get people, contractors, and, and that to, to guess how many cans of solvent cement we make in a year. Fifty million. Fifty million. Yeah. So it's pretty pretty staggering when you look at you consider some of that scale, like how much. And that's that's solvent cement. That's not counting when we're talking. Pipe dope. And pipe dope and supply boxes. It's, it's pretty brings it into perspective how how big of a company we are it, it is i mean like um one of the questions we were going to ask was how, like you know what does od offer but <clears throat> you know a lot of people that don't know about od is that you guys have acquired so many brands which are probably the eight brands people see here uh, but maybe you can give a short list of you know what what people might know and what people don't know that od offers yeah yeah absolutely so so of course everyone knows the knows the od brand and some of the bread and butters staple items, but um, if they kind of more in, in order, the, what the OD supply chain services um, family of brands would be uh, Cherney, uh, which a lot of people may say Cherney, Churn, but you'd be familiar with the, the yellow yellow and black branded test plugs, uh, pneumatic test balls. Um, that's, that's a big one. Um, Dearborn Brass, which was uh, which was an acquisition in t- early 2000s, and Dearborn's a, a foundry out of Chicago. It's been making brass products since the late 1800s. So tubular plastic brass, as well as bath waste and overflow, which is the big focus of ours of late, uh, with some new introductions, um, as well as some under sink like pipe wraps uh, for oh, uh, yeah. people with disabilities. Uh, the Harvey brand is a primarily chemical chemical company, but that was started by by a master plumber actually, uh, William Harvey, who I believe invented wax gaskets. Oh, uh, so that's uh, more so in the U.S. Did the you? US. So then, do you guys? So all your wax gaskets is that the same almost like as the OD ones that you've you know acquired that tech technology per se, or is it still kind of both separate? Yeah, it's it's all the same technology. Um, there there are some differences, uh, little nuances here and there, where there might be a particular gasket that's available in in OD brand, where it may not be available in Harvey brand. Uh, one, uh, somebody at OD is going to shoot me if I get this wrong, but uh, there's a say like a wall hung toilet um, flange within the Harvey brand, uh, but I don't believe we have it in in the OD brand. Ah, uh, okay. There's certainly some crossover. I believe we have solvents, man, and yeah. three or well, it kind of goes to the next question, like, because what I'm always curious is, since you guys have so many brands, <clears throat> and um, w- what would you say are the significant differences of those brands? Because a lot of times, let's say if we see um, Dearborn or OD or even Masters, there's some things that are really similar, like your quick drains, let's just say, right? Um, so Dearborn has some kind of drains, so does Odie have some kind of drains. Like, how are you able to kind of tell or sell the difference when, you know, going to different areas? Because technically, like, why don't I buy Dearborn instead of Odie? Or why don't I sell Odie instead of Dearborn? Like, how do we... Yeah, yeah, it's, it's an interesting question. And um, and to be frank, it, a lot of it has to do with regionality and, and loyalty. Yeah. Uh, it, like, looking at the brand's... Um, I'll speak to Masters in particular because I'm, I'm very familiar with it. Uh, I had a lot of questions upon the acquisition that is Odie going to so is is Odie going to do away with the Masters name? Yeah, uh, because it was, always, it was always competition. That look at the brands within Odie. Do they ever get rid of a brand? Uh, it would be a 
it would be a disservice um, and an injustice to to the brand to get yeah. rid of Master's name in the Canadian marketplace because that's that's what people know and that they they, they love it and they trust it. Yeah. Um, same same goes with say like the Hercules brand. It, it has a following, so don't do away with it because you might lose that following. Ah, uh, I so, see. A lot of it's a lot of it's going to be regionality and and what works well in what areas. Like, don't mess with Dearborn in in southern United States, for example. Yeah, um, that makes so, sense. Yeah, so that that'd be the first thing. But we also we do some analysis uh, from time to time and just rationalize some stuff. Like, do we need flanges in this line and, and in this line, and which one which one moves better? Which one can we be more price competitive on? Things like that. That's that's a neat model how that always works because you know I get curious myself because we've seen Reem buy out so many companies on our end. You know they bought out IBC, they bought out Intergas. So then I'm just like, okay, then what the hell is the point of Reem tanklesses if there's IBC ones now, or what's the point of these other tanklesses from Intergas? Or you know the, the the whole brand thing just comes confusing because technically people are competing within their own brands. <laughs> Yeah, practically, but but it's still yeah. them at the end of the day. So you don't know how much money you're gonna dump on each one because whichever one does well or not, I guess it's still good for them. Yeah, yeah. Very often we get people um, that don't uh, that also don't realize that one one may be different uh, or maybe the, maybe the same with just with different branding on it. So I mean, like trade secret, um, but somebody might hate master silicone. Well, I hate masters, so I'm going to use the Odie one. Uh. Um, okay, go ahead. <laughs> yeah, go ahead. It's, it's still the same business. Um, that's neat, though. I really like the idea that you guys do also have Hercules. So, when when, did, when was Hercules acquired? Was it was it a while ago, or? Yeah. So Hercules is uh, is one of the the more recent acquisitions that was in uh, 2011. So that and that company is. Uh, that company itself was in towards 100 years old um, as well, Hercules Chemical Company, and they do a lot of the same chemical products that, that Odie does and that, that say Masters does, but a lot of the assortment seems to seems to gravitate, especially in Canada, towards heating. Oh, uh, uh, yeah. If you'd be very familiar with, like the Haymaker product for descaling tankless, uh, a lot of our cryotech glycols, um, are in the Hercules brand, and that's that's a a little bit on on our end a strategy where where the traditional water flow plumber um, would would make you know, the OD chemical or the Masters chemical, but uh, but on more on the heating side, like a plumbing and heating company might be more familiar with say like like a Hercules product. And yeah. Anytime we're talking about heating products, we tend to gravitate to, to brand it as Hercules. Okay, so so will there be more kind of heating products that are being made with Hercules coming in the near future kind of thing, do you think? That's 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 the plan. Um, any anything on the heating side we would we would roll out roll out Hercules. Um, and that's that's a bit of a bit of, again of the strategy. You'll see when we roll out new chemicals or New more like traditional plumbing chemicals. We probably in Canada we probably lean more towards the Masters brand because the Masters brand here is more trusted when it comes to to the chemical product and chemical yeah. fam. Okay, well speaking of Hercules and Masters, um, you gave us a swag pack, so I just want to do a quick giveaway here on the uh, Twitch platform or YouTube today. So. Um, we're going to do a quick guess. Well, I posted it earlier today, so if people who are watching, we are going to be giving out a swag pack. So for those who are interested, um, let's do a number to 1 to 100. Whoever gets it will get it. Um, yeah, so type it on Twitch or type it on YouTube. Give me one sec. Wait for the numbers, 1 to 100. <laughs> My girlfriend's like on the right of me passed out. <laughs> <laughs> All right, I have a number in mind here. So anyway, we'll let people keep guessing, and uh, we'll see what happens in the end. Um, so moving forward, actually, 
Uh, I've been going through your IG posts, and there is something that I do. Well, not just your IG, uh, the OD website. I don't know how familiar you're with, with the whole thing, but there is this thing that you guys have called OD University. Um, that really piques my interest, so could you tell me a little bit about that? Yeah, yeah. So, so OD University, um, we, have a, we have a training facility uh, located just right across the street from our main, uh, main manufacturing plant. Uh, which used to be used to be a chocolate factory, uh, but now it's it's converted into a fully fully functioning training facility with uh, auditorium, classroom, uh, screens screens for training, and little modules and, and pods built uh, within the back that can be wheeled wheeled out for for training purposes, uh, bringing uh, bring people in, contractors and the, and the like to see the product at different stages. Um, kind of realistic install at different different stages. Uh, we have a master plumber on staff uh, that that builds all these displays, like working displays and models, so that things are accurate and and to code and everything. Um, and the university program. Not only would we train on new product and and give demos on new product coming out, but we also offer like, CEU credits. Yeah. Uh, in your education. Continuing education credit for for contractors in in different aspects of, of business. Um, one of the, one of them is the solvent cement training program that offers offers credit. Uh, we also have one within the quick drain uh, family for for curbless showers. I'm curious, um, what what would that. you say would be like a solvent cement kind of accreditation? Like, I mean. I'm just saying from an outside standpoint, right? Don't don't get me wrong. I'm not trying to be ignorant, but let's just say for gluing, I'm just gonna glue a joint, right? So if you say there's some accreditation for you know solvents and cements, what is there to actually, you know, learn on that aspect? Yeah. So so little things, just proper application um, and, and technique, making sure that you're reaming pipe, uh, how to how to apply primer. The, the primer, right amount of primer, using the right size dab or, or brush for the right size of pipe. Um, it it seems simple, but but uh, but Doug can stretch it into an hour. Uh, <laughs> I think that just looking looking for flaws um, in uh, in solvent cementing, common errors um, where you can see how to where you can see problems, how to avoid pooling. Um, just things like that, using the right solvent for the right application, because as, as I'm sure you and a lot of, a lot of your viewers know, there's there's a, a multitude of different solvents there yeah. uh, for different applications, especially on the PV side, PVC side. Uh, I mean, ABS, we're, we're lucky in Canada, ABS just has to be yellow. Yeah. Uh, but on the PV, PVC side, it's when you get into more of the commercial and and that it, it gets complicated so picking the that, right that makes that makes sense yeah. how, how often are those courses made is it kind of like you sign up for it at the university or uh you know yeah. is it through invite i'm not i'm not positive how often the the ceu credits go or the courses go um certainly in in the summer months it probably picks up um when People like to come out and come do a tour of the facility and that, um, but I, I'd imagine it'd be a couple, couple of months. That's sweet. Uh, back to the giveaway, we have Guerrero Plumber winning it at 32. Anybody on YouTube got it? Just, just we're just making sure. I'm assuming no. 32 was the number, so Guerrero wins again. I don't know how he's doing it, but uh, this guy's been on every show that we have, so I'm going to say he does deserve it. <laughs> so before I keep asking more questions, um, let's talk about some IG posts at the same time um, that I wanted to bring up. So the first one, well, they're, they're the same post, so I think I sent you the pictures before. I believe you guys are doing some training for this, for some you know, just students you, that, that came into the university side of it. So, yeah. you know, t t tell us a bit about this picture we have here. Yeah, so we do, um, uh, we celebrate Manufacturing Day every year, like 
and celebrating the manufacturing side of the business. Um, and and this group of students were, were participating in a manufacturing camp. Uh, so we had them them come in uh, into into the university as well as doing a plant tour with some some of the key individuals in the different processes to explain how we manufacture different product. And we also had the product team take take students through demonstrations of what the products uh, what the products actually do, um, where they're applied using all those demo demo units that uh, that Doug built. Um, but in addition to that, we also do um, apprenticeship and pre-apprenticeship uh, trade school training sessions uh, on site at the schools. Uh, uh, we'll go to uh, say like a technical college. Um, we've done say like a Kwantlen College out your way, um, and and go through with the students um, and show them show them kind of ins and outs. We'll bring an assortment of product in teach them differences between uh, between a couple couple different products that they're going to see when they're out in the field and and we donate that product that we bring into the schools yeah to use to use in the program uh, and a lot of a lot of technical high schools where where a lot of the students don't uh, they might not know what they want to do but but they they may have a lean towards the trades um, Getting a lot of those people engaged and seeing seeing some of the manufacturers and, and what we have to offer and products that we have to offer it's uh, it's pretty exciting when you get to go in go in and, and train and then six months later or two years down the road you might be at a trade show and and you see a like a young apprentice come up and it's like hey you taught a you taught a class at my school two years ago um, that's awesome. To, to know that you you know you've given back to the community and then afterwards they come back and say that you've had, they've made a career choice because of you being there at their school um, you know I wish our more schools would have it like that even when I was in high school I knew nothing about trades right every trades from high school back then there's not going to be plumbing it's only about cooking or, or woodwork though yeah. those are the only electives I had I mean like I don't want to touch wood I don't want to be a carpenter <laughs> nothing against them but you know plumbers are better Oh. <laughs> no, that's interesting too, and and same same with me. Like there was like kind of the home ec style and auto shop and woodworking, but yeah. but never anything like electrician or or plumbing or heating. Um, it's just interesting that there was almost like this separate school for that. Which so so is, so for the high schools, is it where where does it mainly happen that you guys do these trainings or not not trainings like where your manufacturer holds this. Um, well, I guess training, it, would it be all in the States or do you guys have any within Canada or is it only in Canada that it's colleges? Uh, no, we do, we do it uh, in both. Uh, we do a, a lot in, we do a lot in Canada. It's actually part, uh, it's, it's part of our focus with all of our manufacturers reps. It's that they, they get into their local schools and, and run a, run a trading session like an OD 101. Yeah. Uh, with trade schools and identify who the schools are and, and build relationships with those people and, and try and push it through. Um, on the, the U.S. side, uh, we have the training facility there, so it's, uh, there's definitely a lot more draw to that, getting, getting people into that facility as opposed to going to their classroom, but, um, but there's something, something simple and, and fluid about going, just going to their classroom and, yeah. and Bring the stuff to them, and, well, and again, just leaving it there, walking out like this is yours to use, um, just and, and walking away. That's true. Well, I hope uh, I hope Pro West is listening because uh, they should do something like that. I'd be interested. I've always been interested in that. I mean, it's not it's not for show and tell or whatsoever, but I, I think it's a fun way to give back, and I think it gives people more options about what career options there are. Um, because, you know, when I was in high school, I, I got good grades on everything, but the biggest problem was not knowing where I wanted to end up in. Um, and I'm not saying even if I got trades, I would have ended up in trades, but, you know, at least there's options of where people know it's it's something more of importance, not like, hey, be a plumber, all they do is clean their sewers and clean up your shit, right? Um, yeah. I think there's a lot more to it that people don't know, and that's why, you know, Blue Collar has been given 
people look down on the collar for so long until you know where i'm trying to do part of my job being the next millennial is kind of push the trade forward and really show that there's more to it than just what people think it is so far yeah and i'm, I'm a big believer in that like i'm, I'm pretty passionate about, passionate about bringing bringing attention to to the industry and and getting people in like any any opportunity within uh, like we have a an organization called CIPH yeah. um, in Canada Canadian Institute of Plumbing and Eating, and we do a lot of uh, like trade trade schools and trade fairs, job fairs, like just letting people know like come work in the plumbing industry, uh, not only on the wholesale manufacturing side, but but in the trade, like yeah. it's out in every field. Like there's it's a it's a rewarding career. I mean, like look, look at yourself. Like you're you're a young successful guy. Like you're a, you're a bit of a success story yourself. Like you're the you could be a spokesperson for draw into the trade oh uh, you know that's that's my plan that's my plan always i mean i wouldn't say successful yet there's you know there's things that i want to happen that haven't happened yet but you know so far the journey has been great right i think a lot of people have to know that the journey is part of it yeah yeah, yeah. so moving forward last question i have for you of the day which i'm really interested always is what's coming up new with Odie? Um, so we talked about heating products where, you know, Hercules, they want to go more into heating. Um, but what are some new ideas that you can share without getting in trouble um, of what's coming out with Odie and all your other brands together? Like, what can we be expecting or what's going to be exciting? Yeah, so uh, so there's a couple things on the, on the very near horizon. Um, I've, I've actually brought in, brought a couple samples here just to show. But one of the, one of the I'd say, more exciting things Lately is uh, is in our design line linear linear product. So, I, in a, a lot of people will be familiar with with our standard drain. Uh, these have a just a friction gasket that pushes on and screws into the actual drain body. Oh, good quality stainless. Uh, lots of assortment in terms of uh, like great design sizes um, and and priced well, um, easy, convenient feet for, uh, for leveling. And then oddly enough, the most, I think the most appealing thing anybody talks about in this is, is the strainer basket. Oh yeah. I remember that. I told Matt, I wanted one of those. <laughs> yeah. I mean, everyone always, always gets excited about that, that strainer basket that comes with it. That's the number one thing that clogs all the time in a shower. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. So the other thing is uh, very near future. Again, I think we're we're aiming for for the tail end of this month is our mechanical cleanout test plug. So Ooh. this is in the journey line. So I'll just show you, just pretty simple unit. Uh, it's beefy. It's a it's a nice tool. It looks heavy. Uh, yeah, if if you can't get a can't get an airline um, into your cleanout. This guy locks, kind of goes in. You put this foot in. Oh, I got to get some leverage here. Pardon me. Oh. It snaps in, and that actually presses in and locks up in there, so you can fill that fill up your system. Oh no way! And then when you're done, you just push down, release this, let it go. And because of the angle that's in there, the water will drain down the backside, so you're not going to get water splashing out. And then it pulls out. That looks more like a um, journeyman plumber's kind of tool. If you let an apprentice do that, he'll flood the house. Yeah. <laughs> no, but all in all, it's actually a really great product. Just looking at it, because now we don't have to pump it up and actually have a um, a pump in our van, literally. Yeah. Yeah. So the other the other neat thing um, is this the different version of it actually comes with a fill line as well. Oh. So it works the same way. Goes in, but then it's got a fill port, so you can fill your system with air. Yeah. Or you can screw this and hook that to a hose and fill your system up with water from from the basement from the cleanout. And it can go both ends as well, right? So like if I if I wanted to use it on the other direction, it can also be done yeah yeah in in up, upside down it just 
actually it'd probably be probably easier like to get that leverage than the, than the push down. That's neat. That's, That's neat. Um, probably again, probably by the end of the month, it's, uh, we're pretty excited about it. Actually, uh, locks up pretty pretty well. Uh, and then uh, and then outside of that, what uh, was pretty exciting. I mean, on on our end, it's exciting. Um, is we just launched our our masters paintable silicones today. So I know you guys use use this stuff. Yeah. Uh, but we always get demand. Uh, is is that stuff paintable? And it's not. So we've we've released a paintable version. Uh, so if you're if you ever need to paint over it, uh, latex paint will adhere to this stuff, new stuff. That's sweet. That's yeah. really sweet. I didn't know you guys didn't have paint over ones. I think. Do we ever paint or? No, nope, we never paint them. It's either white, clear, or transparent. Yeah, yeah. Most most people most people know what they want. Um, it's the uh, it's more like on the contractor or the uh, the say the carpenter side. Yeah. Um, they might they might want to paint over, but it's it's there if they need it. You know, you know what I've still been interested with is uh, I know Odie had a line, not had a line, but. Odie still has uh, some things behind them talking about chrome P traps, but they're ABS chrome. Have you? Was it? Was it? I'm pretty sure it was. It was a true thing. I saw it somewhere that you guys had like some painted ABS chrome P traps. You know what? I'm not. I'm not sure on that. I'll I'll look into it and get back to you. I remember I remember talking to Matt about it, and then he was yeah. like, "Oh, they're not sure about that product or whatsoever." But uh, that was something that piqued my interest. Yeah. But other than that, I know you guys also remastered your OD boxes, right? Um, the supply boxes, because before they yeah. they were flimsier, but then now you guys added a bit more beef to it. I see in the corner over there. Yeah, and uh, I'll, I'll actually I'll mention this because uh, it's it's something that's pretty important to us. Uh, in product development, and that is the we call it, we refer to it as VOC, and it's pretty pretty important that we go out, our product team goes out and talks to the contractors, talks to the plumbers that are using the product, and finds out like like what's the one thing that you would change about the supply box you use now, or or if you if you could change anything about what you have, what would it be? Um, and that's where a lot of our new product like development and, and improvements come from. And, and I'm glad you mentioned this on the supply box. One of the one of the biggest called home runs that we've we've ever had in the in that VOC voice of customer uh, experience is on this box. And I'll show you here. So the the actual valves. If you've got this box installed, and valves can seize up. Uh, it's known to happen. People don't close them. They're supposed to close them when they go on holidays. They don't, and then somebody finally goes to close it, and it seizes, and you got to replace the valve. Or let's say you install the box, and you didn't have hammer arresters. You didn't realize you needed arresters on it. So now you got to cut open the wall, disconnect the plumbing, and everything. One neat feature with these, you've got your your drywall. They have these little pins that you can pull out. All right, right, right off the top half of the valve box so you're not disturbing the plumbing underneath and then you can just buy the top half say with an arrestor pop that in and take your pin and just just pop the pin back in look at that and the water pressure will hold that pin in when you turn the water back on but you never had to cut open the wall uh, to do that service work that's neat i remember i uh I'm not going to say names, but I've worked with another box, and uh, I did have something stuck on there. Um, we got a bo bunch of boxes back from it, but it, I did have to cut open a wall to to replace that box because of that one valve, which was uh, it was pretty shitty. Yeah, I mean, there's any number of things could happen where 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 a valve might might fail or might seize on you, and it's uh, it just takes that one step of having to cut open the wall, like. It's a pain in the ass um, just to change that. So that takes that takes that step out, makes it a little bit easier for you. Sweet. Any anything else while you're on the show to uh, let us know what's coming up next? Any other secrets? <laughs> That's about uh, it. Yeah. The uh, I'd say the next 
next biggest thing we're working towards, uh, and, and many of you would be familiar with it already, is, is the quick drain, quick drain product line, uh, herbless shower system. So I mentioned the, the design line in linear, it's kind of the, the entry point in, in linear, uh, but, but the design line, or sorry, the, the quick drain product line, which was, which was acquired out of Denver right before GF Thompson in, in 2017. Uh, it's it's going places. Uh, we're we haven't officially launched the product in Canada, but there are Canadian distributors out there, uh, wholesalers that can sell it, wholesalers that have sold it. Um, there's a there's an excellent product offering. Check, just check out QuickDrainUSA.com. Um, some of this stuff is really cool, like wall wall drain, uh, completely integrated into your, into your wall. So there's oh, no yeah. drain. Uh, really cool stuff that was cool I, I took a took a picture of that uh, yeah so for, for those American guys and there's more Americans here than anything that's uh, that'd be pretty Im- impressive for them to take a look at and hopefully get their hands on those ones yeah. uh, Bold City over here is saying that he wants a Bold and Hercules collab <laughs> sorry what was that he wants uh, you know Christian from Bold City Plumber yeah. he is talking about a Hercules and uh, Bold collaboration I don't know if there is a talks for you with him on that one, but that's what he's talking about. Yeah, yeah, I'm sure. Uh, I'm sure the U.S. U.S. team will be all over that. Yeah, this is the Canadian market, bold. You're on the wrong page. <laughs> <laughs> no, but other than that, um, it's been great chatting with you today. Um, I think we're we're running pretty well on time on the show, but you know, I appreciate your time coming out here today. Appreciate you know you sharing all this information with us and everything that's coming to be new. Um, but before we do leave, is there anything else you want to say to you know the listeners out there, or whoever's watching here today? No, I just uh, appreciate the support. Uh, let us know what we're doing right. Let us know what we're doing wrong. Um, feed in any ideas that that you might have out there, um, and just uh, just stay safe. <laughs> stay safe. Awesome. Thank you so much once again, Josh. I really appreciate you being here today. Um, and thank you everybody else for watching Coffee of Impetus today. Next week we are on episode 12. I'll let you guys know who's up there afterwards. But before everybody leaves, there's another one from Josh from Odie saying that there will be another giveaway with Odie. Am I correct, Josh, with Masters? Um, crimpers and stuff are coming up. So we're going to do another uh, team up on, on the Canadian side. On the Canadian side. <laughs> But it's still open for everybody. So hopefully you guys can uh, keep an eye out on that. And uh, thank you, Josh, for all that. Yeah, thank you. Thanks, Darren. Appreciate it. All right. You have a good week. Then thanks for being on the show. Talk to you soon, Josh. Have a good one. So that is the show with Josh today. Um, Really appreciative for him coming up. And uh, thank you guys for coming to Coffee of Impetus again. Uh, maybe when I set this up, I'll get some banners like him, but, um, you know, it's kind of hot in my room. We don't really want to do an office because the internet's not good in there yet. So we're going to take some time to, uh, really get that going when I probably move later down in the months. Um, but congratulations to you Guerrero again for winning. Uh, appreciate you guys being here every week. Uh, so yeah, anything you guys want, you guys need to know more about Odie. Let me know. Uh, if you guys don't know, up on the bottom right here or the middle, you guys can follow Josh Hopkins 46 You'll find him on Instagram. Any questions you have about all their products, you guys can ask him. Um, so next week, I do have on top of my head what it is, but I will have to do a pre-record on that one just because the time zones are different. Uh, but we will, we will be having Rems on the show next week and uh, more after that. So tune in and thanks a lot. See you guys later.